Hey guys, it's Greg Moore from Fat Talk here. Uh, I had an email a while back and it asked, uh, it was a new technician and he asked, can you walk through the process of putting a pumper into pump mode? I'm a new technician, I want to be able to do it without causing any damage, but I'm kind of too embarrassed to ask my coworkers. And I said, no, sure, no problem. I don't, I don't mind answering any questions that I can. So the pumper we have here today is a uh, Spartan pumper with a waterless pump. It's a water C-series pump, and they actually make a poster which will help you uh, shift, show you how to shift through. So if we were driving this pumper to a fire scene, the first step is to bring the truck to a complete stop. And then we're going to reduce the engine idle of the truck and bring it down to idle and shift the transmission into neutral. You're going to want to make sure it's completely stopped because if it's not completely stopped and you try to make the shift, you actually could damage something because you have gears that are trying to uncouple and recouple. So this is important, it has to come to a stop, it has to be in neutral, and then you're going to want to set the parking brake. Then inside, now this will be inside your truck, in most trucks, every truck could be different, move the shift control lever to the pump position. Now it's important, this shift lever has three positions, up, middle, down. The middle is the neutral. Always stop in this middle position or the neutral position to make sure all the air is exhausted, and then you move it down. That way you're not trying to double shift anything. Once you're down into the road or the pump mode, sorry, we'll come over to our Allison controller. We're then going to shift it in drive. You have two lights here on your shift controller on most in most cases. Pump engaged means just that you've engaged your pump. OK to pump means it's received all the interlocks that it needs in order to engage the pump. So once you have the OK to pump, you're going to move down here. This in most cases today is taken over automatically you don't need to actually touch the throttle at all the truck will take care of that on its own if you have an older truck it may be necessary to adjust the idle speed and hold it there of course you're always going to want to make sure when you get out of the truck that you do have it blocked using wheel chocks and again different truck setups different things this particular setup here would have a throttle ready you might also see it as okay to pump on the back of the pump as well coming out of pump mode into road mode is just the opposite the important thing is here that you want to make sure that your transmission is stopped. So your first step would be to put your transmission in neutral. You're then going to come over and watch your speedometer and your RPM. Once everything idles down to zero, in, in the case of your speedometer, it'll be idle for your engine. You will make your shift from road, uh, sorry, from pump to road. Again, middle position is neutral. You're going to want to stick there for a couple of seconds just to make sure all the air is exhausted out of one side of the switch. Once you're back up in road, you can hit drive, you are now ready to pull away. Okay guys, just to show you exactly what I meant by stopping in the middle, this is your shift selector switch. It is a pneumatic switch, which means it's air powered. It has three positions, the up, the middle, which you'll hear it exhaust. So now both sides of the switch are empty, and we'll talk about that in a minute and then down in pump mode. You'll automatically see that the pump engaged and this particular truck comes on. It means that you're requesting the pump to be engaged. It has received that request. So again, we're in road mode. We want to go to pump. Simply switch it to neutral for a second. All the air will exhaust. Down in pump. Okay guys, here is the Allison transmission controller we talked about and how I said it has to be in neutral to make your shifts. Quite simply, if this states anything other than N, you're going to make sure you press neutral. It should always be in neutral before you attempt any kind of shift. The truck should also be reading zero on your speedometer before you make any kind of shift whatsoever. Okay guys, we're a little bit different than firemen in the way we put stuff in, uh, we put the truck in pump and take it out of pump in that most times we see the truck, it's as we see it here, just sitting here. A firefighter will usually have the truck running, they're already on scene. So for us, we need to go from bone warm shutdown to pump mode. And I'm going to walk you through that now step by step. So the first thing you're going to want to do is come over, obviously, and open the door, jump in the truck. I have already applied an exhaust hose and I am going to put on some... Uh, some hearing protection, I have safety glasses on, all the usual things. So once our truck 
truck is started, we're going to confirm that we're in neutral. Which is simply an in on the Allison display, or whichever transmission you happen to be using. We're going to confirm that our park brake is indeed applied, which it should be if our truck was left here. We'll make sure nothing is moving. We'll come down to our switch, our PTO switch, or our shift switch. Put it in the middle position, or put it in the pump. We're looking for our pump command light, which we have. We will then come over and select drive on the Allison transmission. At this point, we're going to watch the speedometer. You should see an increase in speed, and obviously the truck should not try to move. So once we see the speedometer come up, we're not moving. We'll look down here at our shift switch again. Now we've got the okay to pump. So we are ready to go back to our control panel. Now something to remember is that when you engage any truck in the pump mode, uh, this particular truck is a midship pump. So as soon as it's engaged in the pump, it's turning the actual pump itself. The impeller's turning, things are moving. So even at an idle speed, this pump will produce pressure. You never want what's called deadhead a pump. And deadheading a pump simply means you're producing pressure with nowhere for it to go. It's taking the same water, pressurizing it over and over and over again. And what happens is it builds up a lot of heat. And it builds it up very fast. So as soon as your truck is engaged in pump and it's running, you do want to get some water to that pump. You need to circulate water. And any amount of circulation will uh, suffice because you just need to get cold water to it. To simply do this, just give it tank the pump to supply water to the pump and then open your tank fill slightly and what that's going to do is it's going to circulate the water from your tank through your pump back into your fill tank so you'll always have constant cool water running into your pump it'll prevent deadheading and overheating okay we're back here at our panel we're going to make sure we got our can here our voltage is normal just a quick check that's all you may or may not see pressure here depending on if your pump is prime. But the most important thing is to get some water into this pump to help keep it cold. So now we're just going to open our tank to pump. You want to open this one the full way. You just partially open your tank fit. From there, for testing into the garage, I just simply use our hand mode. Then we'll increase our RPM while applying some primer. And we'll watch our pressure build. very important that everything must be stopped. Right now that front drive shaft is spinning and that is evident by our speedometer. So the first step is very simply to put the transmission in neutral by pressing in. Then we're going to watch our speedometer. Our speedometer must be dropped off to zero. Now that we know everything is stopped, we can go to our shift select. At that point, we can put the truck back in drive, and we feel the truck lurch a little bit, so we know that we are now in road mode. Okay, let's have a quick look at a couple of the components. I didn't have a whole lot here on hand, but I can demonstrate to you with these. Keep in mind that every pump you'll find is, is different uh, when you go from manufacturer to manufacturer. This is just out of one specific style of pump, but it'll give you a rough idea of what's going on. Here is the selection switch that we were using in the truck, and here is the actual actuator end. This is what moves when you give it the command. And this switch, all it simply does is direct air from one position to another. In the process, exhausting air in the previous position. 
And what I mean by that is this switch simply air pressure is applied to this port here. And depending on the position of the switch, it can either be traveled through here or through here. And it's quite simply when this side is pressurized, this side is exhausted. So in the up position, for example, you might be applying air pressure here and it is exhausted through here. So this line has pressure, this line does not. The exhaust ports are here. So when you move this switch and exhaust a line, all the air escapes through here. Now, the neutral position exhausts both sides so that nothing is happening. You have no air pressure going anywhere. This end is actually dead-headed, dead-headed, sorry. And these two exhaust ports are open. So that's why it's important when I said going through the position to take that second and pause, because you don't want this, pre this one here to be applying air and this one's not totally exhausted. It, nine chance out of 10, nothing might never happen, but it's just good practice to make sure that you stop there. And I mean, literally, you just need to stop for that long. This is the actuator of this particular pump. And like I said, this will be different depending on what pump you have. It has two ports on it. One is here, one is here. This port you're looking at here and this particular actuator is just for a position sensor. This is one of the inputs that'll give you your okay to pump. The switch actually dictates if it sees this in pump mode or not. For this particular actuator, a quick look will tell you where it's stuck out at the end here, we are now in pump mode. If this actuator, just as a side note, were to fail and you needed to get it back, if you can get something behind it and push that forward, you're now in road mode. So that will get you out of a jam if need be. So what's going on here, you have two ports, like I mentioned, one here, one here. When the position of the switch is in the up position, it is applying air to the back port and it has exhausted the front port. So the piston moves ahead. That physically shifts the pump into road mode. When you shift down into pump mode, after pausing in neutral, you are exhausting this line and applying air to the back. So the corresponding action is to move that backwards. It physically shifts it into pump mode. Basically in this style pump, midship pump, you're dividing the power. The power can either go directly from the transmission right back to the rear end and not spin the pump, thus moving the pumper, or it can drive the pump and not send any power to the rear end. And that's how you get your split shift. It's very important that everything must be stopped, as I mentioned, because this needs to make that shift and you don't want any shafts or shift forks moving when it's, uh, when it's doing that. Or, or sorry, you don't want any drive shafts spinning while the shift forks are trying to make that shift. All right, guys, it's one thing to know how to shift it from the truck. I find if you actually, you don't need to be a mechanic, but if you understand what's going on when you shift the lever, it'll help you perform the shift a bit better. This is the inside of a water uh, drop box or transmission. This is where, when you do your shift, this is where it mechanically happens. And mechanically, it's quite simple. There's just a collar and it moves forward, or sorry, backward or forward, depending on where you shift. Middle position's neutral. And it's gonna direct power either to the back of the truck for driving or to the front. The important thing to remember is that these teeth here in both sides of these gears have to align with this collar. So that's why it's important to make sure when you're doing your shift, everything is in neutral and stopped. Because if it's not, just picture this shift, this shaft is spinning, 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 spinning. And all of a sudden you command a shift. Well, it's gonna try to, it's gonna try to lock in, but it can't. When everything is stopped as it should be, the shift is that simple. So no damage is done, nothing is hurt. Again, if you're moving and you're trying to shift, if this shaft is spinning and you're trying to go into road, it's just gonna grind and bang and do damage. So my hand right now would simulate the shift fork. I will show you a video of that after. You pull up on that air lever, all you're simply doing is moving a collar. Drive powers in the center. These are three separate pieces. Drive powers provider from the center. It splits the power from the center to pump. So right now we're simulating being in pump. When the drive shaft turns with the motor power, you're spinning your pump. When you want to road, it basically just shifts it to the back. And now you'll see back here, the pump isn't spinning, but your rear tail shaft is. The biggest thing I wanna do by showing you this is that when nothing is stopped, when everything is moving, which is not supposed to be, this is why things break. Because this gear is moving 
and this one isn't, and it's impossible for them to mix until everything slows down. And to make it slow down, if it's not done correctly, it's using this collar and the friction against this gear, which is in turn chewing up the gear. So when everything stopped like it should be, look how easy that is. Same thing, everything stopped, we want to go to run. But when you're moving, if you forget to put it in neutral and this drive shaft's still going, all you're doing is grinding the collar. So that'll give you a bit of a, a visual take on exactly what's going on there. And I'll show you a video now when we put the shift uh, actuator and ring back in, what actually happens. Thanks, guys. Okay, guys, here we are underneath that same Waters uh, drop box transmission we were talking about. Just to give you a little orientation of where we're to. This is the front yoke. This would connect your transmission to the drop box. And this is your rear yoke. This would go from the drop box back to your differential. And here's a closer look again at those uh, gears we were talking about. And you can see now the shift collar is all installed. And I'm going to have my coworker there make a shift for you. Right now we are in, right now there we are in road mode. So when this drive shaft turns, so does the back one. All our power is being transmitted to the rear differential. Okay, just shifted the pump there, Justin. So now when he makes a shift up top, it shifts from this inside collar to this one right here. And what that does is it, our back one now spins free independently of our front one. So we're no longer in road, no power is being transmitted to the back. All of the power being inputted here is now being transferred to the pump. And you can see now when you rotate this one, your pump spins. Okay, Justin, just go back to road for a second. And you can see how smoothly this transfer happens when everything is done the way it should. Okay, so here you can see closely the two different gears. Right now the pump gear isn't moving and the driven gear from our input yoke is. So the reason all this has to be stopped is because these gears have to align, that collar has to shift over. If this gear is still moving, if you don't allow that transmission to stop, this one is still moving, it's going to, the collar is, going, is locked to this collar, so it's going to grind against this one. That's where your damage comes from. Justin, just shift it to uh, pump there, please. And you'll see what a much rougher engagement that was now that we were moving the shaft. I can't spin it far as fast as the engine would. But that's pretty much it. Um, so right now, your selector up top is in pump mode. Your rear drive shaft spins free, so there's no power going to your differential. Your front input shaft is now spinning the pump. Justin, put it back to road, please. When he makes the shift back to road, it shifts that collar. It unlocks the pump and relocks the rear diff. So I don't know if I can get both of these in the same shot, but you can see these yokes are now connected and this pump does idle free. You can spin this pump separately of the shaft. Hope this helps guys. I really hope this puts a bit of light on your question. The person that had asked me to do this really didn't want to be identified and I certainly respect that. Uh, that being said, if anybody has any questions that they're not comfortable asking themselves, send me an email and I'll gladly do my best to answer them or I'll ask somebody for you. I don't mind asking any question no matter how silly it may seem to somebody. I also want to take a second to thank my co-worker Mr. Justin Russell who's behind that camera there. He stayed late today on my own uh, on our own times to do this. Uh, I also want to thank my employer the St. John's Regional Fire Department. They were kind enough to allow me permission to take videos here in the garage using their equipment. And guys, I want you to contribute all that you can to this group, but make sure you take a second and just have a chat with your employer and make sure they're okay with it. If you got any more questions, email me. I look forward to chatting with you all on the uh, Facebook group. And I am in no way a public speaker or an actor, so I hope you were able to get through this. Thanks, guys, and have a good day.